Today, we're really going to touch on five main topics. The first one being what is an assembly fem. I'll just go through a quick description of the assembly fem and when it's applicable to use as well as its importance. The second one's going to be creating the assembly fem. This is where I'll go through how we import the individual fems to create that larger assembly of fems. And then the third one's going to be how we can update the assembly fem for making changes inside of the CAD. That's just going to be a quick demonstration. And then I'll also talk about assembly fem connections where we will show how we can use RBE, C bushes, and contact between surfaces, just to name a few. And then the last topic is going to be the modal analysis where we will go through a quick simulation to ensure that all of our connections between those fems were successful. So what is an assembly fem? The assembly fem is a method of bringing in multiple fems into one combined file. And this is done to make the simulation really more realistic between the connections of the parts. So when we need to bolt parts together, this is where we will use the separate files and we will do that in one quick assembly fem. The assembly fem can consist of parts, sub-assemblies, or both. And it's really most useful when we have multiple parts and or sub-assemblies where they are manufactured separately and require these connections between them to be fastened. The assembly fem is very important. It's a powerful tool for larger scale projects. It allows for a project to be a lot more organized in a way that engineers may prefer. As well as that, you can have individual sub teams work on their own individual parts of the project, and then you can bring all of the components in together at the end. So when it comes to creating the assembly from the first step is really making sure that all of our parts or sub assemblies have their individual fems completed and ready to go. From there, once we create the that assembly fem file, we're really going to notice that we have an empty display window and all of our parts are going to be ignored. This is when we will go ahead and import those assembly fem file or those individual fem files into their respective ignored part files. And as we can see on this image on the screen, it will really appear that our assembly fem is all nice and ready to go, but this is not the case. We cannot use this in an analysis yet because although it looks like everything is in place, nothing is being held together. And these are really just separate uh, separate fem files that are just floating in air. So this leads us into how do changes in the CAD reflect in the assembly fem? Well, we know that when we work on projects, there's always going to be changes, whether they be as simple as moving a component from one location to another, or as complex as changing the entire design of the CAD. This does not mean that we need to start the assembly fem from scratch. Instead, this means that we have to go back into the CAD assembly and make changes there in which we will update later in the assembly fem. So in this case, we're going to be looking at moving one component from one location to another. And the first step in doing this is to really look at the constraints applied in the CAD assembly, because this is where these, these constraints can impact which components are actually going to be moved. So as you can see on this image on the left, we see that the fuel tank, the nose cone, the fuselage, and the base are all tied together. So at this point, it would not be possible to just move one component from one location to another. So what you would have to do here is delete that constraint. So say we wanted to move just the nose cone, you would delete the constraint holding the nose cone to the rest of the components. And then you can move it upwards as seen in the picture on the left. And once that's done, you can go back into the assembly fem and you notice that nothing has been updated yet. We see that the nose cone is still in its original position. But if you look at the top left corner of the right image, you'll see that the update button is no longer grayed out. This is where you'll select the update button and the nose cone would actually move up as we see in this image right here. So this takes us into adding connections to the assembly fem. So connections should really be applied if the individual components and sub assemblies first, and then that, as that assembly fem second. So in this case where we want to just bolt all of these components together, there's no real need for connections at the individual component level. But since we know that we are gonna bolt all of these components together, we do still wanna create our RBEs at that individual component level. And then at the assembly fem level, we will introduce our C bushes that will uh, really simulate creating those bolts at the assembly fem level. Another thing that we could do for connections is surface to surface contact or surface to surface gluing. And this is just another method of securing components together. I would say that this is a lot more viable when you don't need results for your bolts. If you're not interested in the stresses or any results that the bolts will now you will find out from the bolts in the simulation, you can go ahead and use both of these tools. I do want to note that it is important to create the regions as accurate as possible where they will be contacted or glued as this will produce the most accurate results. 
From there, once our connections are added, we're gonna go ahead and conduct a quick modal analysis to check our connections. This is more of a sanity check. You don't need to have any constraints on your model or any loads. You're just gonna create a solution 103 real eigenvalues analysis. And then from there, you can run it and get your results back. And from those results, what we really wanna look for is that the first six rigid modes are gonna be close to zero and nothing is flying off of the model. And that's really how you know that your connections have been set up properly. And then once you scroll through those modes, you'll see that after the sixth one, you'll start to see bending, but you'll still wanna see that none of your components are flying off. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into a quick demonstration. And so right here, what I have is just a quick CAD assembly of a model rocket. So what we're gonna do here is click on application and hit pre slash post. So once we see that it's been loaded in, we want to see where it says change display part. We'll click on this drop down and we'll create a new assembly from. From here, we'll just accept the defaults. Accept the defaults again and then let that load. So as stated before, our display window is going to be empty. We're going to want to click on this drop down to open up the individual parts and we'll see that once again, they are ignored. This is where we'll go ahead and right click and import them. We're going to click on map existing and then we'll click on our folder to find our parts. In this case, we're going to match them by, by name. So our base part is going to have the base fem. We're going to go ahead and click okay. And then it'll load in. So we're going to head and we're going to go ahead and do that for all of them. You just want to match it by name to make sure that you don't import the wrong file in the wrong place. Once again, this is our fuel tank. Click OK. And then for the last one is our fuselage. And then click OK. So once again, our assembly fem is nice and set up. We have all of our files inside the same file now but it is not ready to use because we have no connections between these parts so if we go back to our <clears throat> cad model we're going to want to click on application and then click on modeling this is where we'll go back into the assembly and try to move the nose cone so we'll go ahead and look at the constraints as i said earlier and we want to go ahead and delete this constraint right here if you want to move just simply just the nose cone we'll click on move component let that load so we'll select our component from motion. We'll click on this drop down and select distance. For our vector, we'll select the Z direction and we'll just hit 12 inches. We'll click okay. And so we see that our nose cone has moved 12 inches. Once we open up that assembly fem file, once again, we'll let this load. And you see that our update button is no longer grayed out right here in the top left corner where we'll, we'll click on that and it moves our component for us. So going back, we'll go ahead and move this back into its original position. Click on the same steps. We just want to make sure that our vector is now in negative Z direction. We'll move it by the same amount. And once again, we open up that assembly from file. And then we'll click update. So to save us time, I already went ahead and added RBEs at the uh, individual component level. So we see that we have our RBEs here, but just to show you one quick um, way of adding your seed bushes, we'll click on this 1B connection at the top. We'll select that, we'll make sure that this dropdown is node to node, and then we'll change it from proximity spider to proximity. From there, we're just gonna go ahead and select both of the nodes at, of the RBEs. So we'll select the first one right here as the source node, and then for the target node, you wanna select this back one. We wanna make sure that this dropdown at the top is on no method, we'll click on that second node and then you make sure you change your type to C bush in this case if we are creating a bolt and then we'll click OK. And as you can see, our bolt has been created right here in the middle. Let me go ahead and zoom out. So to save us some more additional time, I didn't want to create all of the C bushes necessary. So I, made, I went ahead and just filled them in for us. And so as you can see right here, I'm going to show you guys another method of that of those connections and this is going to be a surface to surface contact so what you want to do is once you create that sim file you'll click on simulation object type at the top under loads and conditions and then you'll create surface to surface contact and the first thing that we want to do is change our drop down from automatic parent to manual 
this is where we will create our readings of what we want to be contacted together. So I'm going to click on this drop down and looking at this model, I know that for the nose cone to connect to the fuselage, I'll go ahead and hide this fuselage. This part of the nose cone is what we're going to want. So when we go to create our region, we'll name it nose cone, and then we'll change our method of selecting our elements that we want to be glued to feature angle element faces. And then from here, I know that if you click on this arrow, our tolerance is at 30 degrees. I know that this is too much, so you're going to want to tone it down to about 10 to select just the elements that you want. And then from here, you can go ahead and select the region that is going to be glued. From there, you'll click OK. And then you can go ahead and show the fuselage once again so you know what you need to select for the next one. So we'll go ahead and, for the target region, create a new region. We'll name this the fuselage. And then for this one, there is no, you can't really use feature angle element faces because no matter what your tolerance is, you're going to select everything. So we'll go ahead and stick with no method and we're just going to have to eyeball this. What I would recommend is making sure that you are sitting straight on an axis, which is why we have this selected right here. So from here, I'll go ahead and hide the nose cone and I will highlight over the area that I believe we need to be, we we'll need to be glued to the nose cone. From there, I will click OK. So now that we have both regions connected, we have a minimum search distance and a minimum search distance and a maximum search distance. And these are important because this will really tell you where your glue, where your surface to surface contact will be activated. So in most cases, you would just click the equal sign, hit measure, and then you will measure between the two parts. In this case, I've already done it before. So I know that 0 0.5 inches will give us just enough that we have a little extra to make sure that everything between the two parts is going to be contacted. So we'll click OK. We'll show our mesh and then we see that our surface to surface contact pops up. So from here, what you could do is just hit right click, hit the paintbrush and then drop it down so it's not overwhelming your model. And then now we have all of our connections set up. Once again, I went ahead and created and already ran the simulation beforehand so we wouldn't waste as much time. And so once you go down, we'll open up our solution, our results, and then we'll click on those. We'll go ahead and look at our first six modes. And we see that, like we said, well, like we stated earlier, they are very close to zero. They are rigid body modes. We want them to be close to zero. And if you scroll through these, <clears throat> through all of the modes, you'll see that nothing is flying off. And this is exactly what we want to see. And once we get to mode seven, we'll start seeing some bending but everything is still connected by these Seabush connections. Moving back to the PowerPoint slides, we'll go to our summary page. And really what I want you guys to take from this is that we create that assembly FEM file once we know that all of the individual components have a completed FEM and they're ready to go. From there, the individual FEMs would then be imported into that assembly FEM file. And if you have any changes that you are going to make inside of the CAD assembly, we want to make sure that we always update the assembly FEM to make sure that those um, changes have been updated to reflect <clears throat> in the assembly FEM. From there, we can add connections at the component level and then the assembly FEM to make assembly FEM level to make sure that everything is secured. And then once those connections are added, a quick modal analysis should suffice to make sure that all components are indeed tied to each other as they would be if they were manufactured. And once again, the assembly FEM is a powerful tool when it comes to larger scale projects because it helps with organization as well as individual teams can specifically work on what they are assigned and then everyone can just bring their models in together. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.